If you were late, you got in wherever the bar was. You're like, Gee. It'd, mm-hmm. be a, it'd be a quick day. <laughs> Rob, Rob jumps in at 4.55 yeah. or whatever it was. Does. How many sets you guys done so far? Okay. Yeah, it's just, I caught up. Let's go. Now, he did. He come in the one day, and it was I think the I just, 405 for eight sets of two, whatever it was. He just did 16 and left. Yep. I'm like, well, I guess that's fucking one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys Sunday. Yeah. Well, he was a lot like Joe, where he would do the, the one main thing, and then where'd he go? Yep. Like, he's done. And, you know, it's it worked. You know, for we should have we should have learned from that though too, because yep. we'd stay there and do tons and tons of shit that we probably didn't need to do. Yeah, you yeah. Know he that. was he was freakishly strong and gifted. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He was. That's why I said I think we've had a lot of people that were really really good at you know one or two things mm-hmm. and you know maybe mediocre at something else, mm-hmm. but he was like significantly good at all three. Mm-hmm. He totaled a lead in his first meeting. You know what lift was first? <laughs> Remember that? That's great. Yeah, he had. A, he actually asked the. You know how they do the rules meeting. He he, he fucking asked what lift. He's like, you've never been so embarrassed in my life. You know who was going. You know what I'm like, Who's going to ask that? But he asked that, and it's like there she goes and tolls his leap. You know, it's like jeez. Yep. <laughs> and that was probably after what, like maybe eight weeks of training with us or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long he was there yeah. before he did his first meet. But he, mm-hmm. I mean, he was strong when he came through the door. But he mm-hmm. got. Like top level strong, mm-hmm. quick. Yeah, in my weight class. In you your know, weight just, class, yeah. another fucking bust in the head. You know, you're busting yeah. your ball to get your balls mm-hmm. to get better. And then sh- boom, like whoa, fuck. You know, then Stafford, boom, like son of a bitch, this sucks. Yep. You know, you're just doing all you can do. The other thing though, with what you're saying is with with the group aspect, is we I, I learned the best squat cues from him and Chuck. Mm-hmm. You know, those two, because we're always watching that. Yes, we're fucking with people, giving them shit. But if something's off, you know, it'd be, you know, listen, do this. Mm-hmm. You know, it was always the bench from you. You know, it's like, look, man, your wrist is fucked. Do this. We are always helping each other with those little oh, yeah. things, you know, and those little things make a big difference. Well, that's man. that's kind of what I meant about, like, everyone was a coach. Yes. Once you figured it out, you had to learn it yourself. Mm-hmm. And you learned what to watch for or what someone, you could see what someone was actually doing wrong better mm-hmm. than you could see it on yourself, obviously. Mm-hmm. But you you didn't have Louie as a coach. You had five or six other people coaching mm-hmm. that would, and if you kind of polled them at the same time, they probably all saw the same thing. That's yeah. how in tune people were. But they'd have different like ways to say it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Where oh, totally. It, maybe, we're, maybe you were trying to tell, or you were trying to tell me, but he would tell me one way. Sure. You know, like, th- here's what you do with your belt, you know, your app, right. whatever it was. And it's like, oh, shit, that was way easier. Yeah. You know, it's like, yep. how did I not know that in the last eight years? It's like a hack. You know, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, how did I not know this? You, like, fi- you figured it out in year 10. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. And, and I mean, yeah, the venture became a whole nother yeah. animal because that was a whole fucking different. That's great, isn't it? Like, you yeah. guys won't believe what I just figured out. And you're like. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like I'm, I'm on my last leg, and I just realized now you're supposed to so, squeeze so the bar. You, so if I push on my belt, this actually gets easier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's a, the um, the bench shirts. Like I said, changed over time. Where I remember trying to put you in a poly. Oh, that was terrible. No, that was not good. No, I remember I was dying in those things. Oh, oh was my terrible. god. Oh. He, I, he was claustrophobic. I was claustrophobic as oh, shit. I just bro. remember couldn't get. We were stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could. I, I could not breathe. I used to, because I used to love having Bob Co help me because he was big and tall, and we had to do like a whole countdown and a breath and like I, you had a split <laughs> second to get that thing over my head or else. I mean, I didn't have a neck. I didn't have nothing. You know, like it was just like a big pumpkin <laughs> sitting on my shoulder. You think? And, <laughs> and, and as long as he could get my head through where I could actually like suck air, I was cool. But it was just. Yeah. That take, it then, take it off, take it off. I'm probably taking more off than I put on. <laughs> like, And then when they finally got that whole open back shirt, I was like, okay, this is the ticket. Like, It, it wasn't about mm-hmm. the shirt being better for me. It was about, I don't have to like worry about my head going through this mm-hmm. thing. That was kind of crazy if you think, because I remember when uh, Vanessa's shirt blew out at that one meet, and she benched a big PR. Yep. And we're like, oh, my God, she did that, and her shirt was – I mean, to us it was like more impressive yeah. because she did it, and her shirt was blown out. Yep. And then you find out later, oh, put shit. You, put you in a way better group. That makes you way better. Yeah, you're not you know, fighting like, the shirt. So who was the guy who figured, what was the guy that worked on all Chuck's cars? Sonny? Sonny. Wasn't Sonny the first one who don't mess with that and he benched something yeah, stupid? Yeah, he might have been the first one in Westside. Mm-hmm. But I, if I recall, I, this might be given credit again. I think, didn't Jesse kill him? We were somewhere and there was a guy that had his shirt cut open in the back and like he was struggling in the warm up room with like I'm gonna call it like three sixty five or something, and it was hard four or five maybe whatever roll, 
and goes out and benches like over 600 pounds. Yeah. And I don't, I don't remember who it was, but it's like, how did that just happen? Like, then you started seeing people get, mm-hmm. you know, some decent carryovers from, I never got those huge carryovers. Well, it's because I think what I figured out was like my last meet, 198, I tried like 635, but I couldn't get a touch chest. Mm-hmm. It went up like, burp. Well, mm-hmm. now you just keep going up, right? You just, right. Mm-hmm. You just keep going up. It's going to go up if yeah. you can touch your chest. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that was a ticket. Because I remember I went from like 585, I did 633, and they were like, mm-hmm. yeah, What was your up. best bench roll? 530. 530. 1, 190. That was my, my And your best bench with a shirt? On file, I think 565 with multiple 600s. Huge carryover. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, like, I mean, like my best was like 540 and like 605. It's crazy. I just couldn't fucking figure it out. It wasn't for a lack. We could have used it more, but yep. again, it wasn't for a lack of trying. I mean, you go in there and it'd be like, this sucks. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to figure out when to put it in. Yep. Because it was so wrecking on your system. Yep. You know, to even put it on and then trying to get the damn thing to come down. Yep. Is a bitch too, or know that it's not. You know that it's going to not last. Right. The neck's going to blow out. The shoulder. Oh, uh, I can't blow even. Out. How many? And we went through. I had to go through a hundred of them. But yeah, just. But what, even when when the shirt, when the back got open on the shirt, I feel like the blowouts went down. Yes. Also. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because it wasn't pushed, putting stress on the shirt and like wrong seams or whatever the, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's that's when I feel like because I even got to the point where I had multiple shirts i had a shirt for an opener a second attempt a third attempt and and then maybe a fourth if things go really well because like, mm-hmm. you started dialing them in but that's like what chuck was saying if you would have known that no oh. way yeah. before well but, you guys started young enough too that did you have your squat suits blow out in the ass I was yeah, always I, the polyins, or I don't think I ever yeah. had a squat suit. Yeah. I, I had I had one or two blowouts. Yeah, because I remember that coming up. Yeah. You're worried about the because that sucked too. The strap, yeah. my the strap, strap blowing. But, and that was even before because even squat briefs weren't a big thing Mm-mm. way back when. That wasn't a big. I didn't even know there was fucking double ply until I came to West. Yeah. I swear to God, like Louis, like what is this shit? Yep. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like you you can get double ply. I'm like, what the hell? Like what? No, no, no. You just call Frank. That's all. All my best lists were done in double play. Yeah. I never. Yeah. yeah I, I had no idea. I, I had no clue. Because yeah. it wasn't advertised. Right. You know, you call. I'm like, oh, shit, this is legal? Like, hell yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, give me. I yeah. want that shit. Mm-hmm. You know, then you start. Then you realize, well, that ain't as easy as just putting it on either. Yeah. You know, the double ply bench shirt yeah. before it was denim was a, not even worth it. Yeah. It was not worth it. I'd just rather just do it raw. You know, then the the bench shirts that were not cut in the back, you right. know, the, those suck too. Oh, the those were terrible. I actually was watching a video when I when I benched seven twelve in Texas. That was in a closed back shirt, and it was like, I look back at it and you're like, God, that form was terrible. Mm-hmm. You know, because it would like kind of handcuff you. Like I don't know how I even made it to be. Oh honest. yeah, you always dropped it. Off. Yeah, and then you kind of had to like pull it back and then put it into the groove. You're just like, Ugh. now that when they cut it open, everything just kind of mm-hmm. like it was made to be there mm-hmm. but that's when everything i think you, less injuries at least for me yeah i think i think that's where we fell a little bit behind the curve right for sure. because for for a long time you could train with i think it actually was beneficial to not train with it you mm-hmm. know because you build that raw strength yeah. up then you put it on oh, you're not getting much you know out of the wraps in a squat suit what maybe 80 pounds sure 100 maybe you know but then the shit got way better you know, we didn't change, you know, what we were doing. That's actually funny you mentioned that because one of the things that I I felt like I got really good at, because I didn't squat super wide like you guys did, mm-hmm. but learning how to use knee wraps as a rebound. Mm-hmm. So when I was training in Cleveland, because we put them on all the time, mm-hmm. and I would actually start wrapping my knees, even though it wasn't super tight, at like 405 to get used to the, to learn how to use mm-hmm. them as a rebound. Because I did squat, I don't want to call it narrow, but I didn't squat like, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't have long legs either. Yeah, so. yeah. It's all relative, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's the equipment was a huge thing, though. I think that's why I don't. I'm not involved anymore. But that's why, like, the sport to me today is totally. It's not what we did as right. powerlifting. It's different. It's, it's definitely just totally different. different, and it's fine. Yeah, you know. But that's why I don't think you can compare a today number versus a you know 2000 number. Yeah, I mean, I was only gone. I was only out of the sport five years and. You know, at the, at the best time, that my best, I think I was eight in the nation in my weight class. And when I came back, that number dropped down to like 40-something, yeah, yeah. you know. And it was like, you know, all the squats were in the not high nines and the benches were close to the sevens. And 
Yeah, the deadlift always stayed in the low sevens, mid sevens type of thing. But yeah, that total went way down. And of course, at that point in time, the the bench shirts changed. Sure, you got the canvas suits. You know, of yeah. course, there was still nothing for the deadlifts. Yeah. Other than just yeah, because yeah, that's, that's more of a raw strength lift. 